Baraka Fah Yahawa, Bahasham Yahawa Shai, Bahasham Rokwa Kadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and also salutations to all of the sincere Akim worldwide pushing this truth in sincerity, man. You can see what the title reads for itself. It says, Star Wars coming. Trump seriously considers creating US Space Force. Now, brothers in the truth already know, man. You know, hey, you know, read the book of Obadiah. Uh, the, 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 the so called white man's out there setting his nest among the stars. When it speaks about that in Obadiah, for those of you that are not really familiar with the scriptures, that's talking about the satellite capability that you so called Europeans have. You know, the fact that you're out there with your space stations and your satellites and you're exploring the deep depths of space, man, or attempting to at least, yeah? Donald Trump, the the president of the USA, basically said he wants to establish a sixth branch of the military in space. I wonder why. <laughs> Let's read a bit of this article. It says, despite the mockery on social media, US President Donald Trump apparently has not rejected an idea of creating a space force. He said he is seriously thinking about making it a new military branch. Continuing on, we are actually thinking of a sixth military branch that would be the Space Force, the US leader said during a ceremony at the White House. He was presenting the annual Commander-in-Chief's trophy to the Army football team for his victory over both the Air Force and the, and, the, and the Navy last year. Trump went on to say that the US is getting very big in space, both military and for other reasons, without going into further details. <laughs> I wonder why. We'll bring the precepts out in a minute, but it says, We are seriously thinking of the Space Force, the US leader said on Tuesday. He already floated the same idea back in March as he spoke to a crowd of Marines at the Miramar Air Station in San Diego, California. At the time, he said that his national strategy, strategy sees the space as a warfighting domain, just like land, air and the sea. <laughs> the idea, however, resonated with the general public the idea, however, hardly re resonated with the general public as people turned to the social media to have a good laugh at it. The reaction was no different this time as people once again started to post memes and reference to popular sci-fi movies. You know, and you've got some examples here. They're trying to take the piss out of the man. Hey, it's motto will be, may the force be with you. And I just made that up. <laughs> you know, many different examples. You know, but guess what? When your how about how a shot comes with the chariots, man? It ain't gonna be a joke then, man. <laughs> it really ain't. You see, that's what a lot of these people out here do. They jump on social media, they crack jokes, they make laugh, la laughter and mirth about ser really serious situations. But guess what? Donald Trump ain't wrong in what he's saying. But the simps in Babylon ain't going to adhere to it, man. They, they don't really believe in aliens. A lot of these people out here don't even believe there's anything out there in the universe. They, they, they're they bogged out on that theory of evolution. They think men just came from monkeys and that's it. There was just an explosion in space. Total wickedness, total darkness. That's what we have to deal with out here, man. The scripture talks about Job, um, you know, lots of like your... A lot being vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Hey, on a daily basis, brothers out here in London and the States and worldwide, man, wherever wherever brothers are at, man, you know, we're all catching hell, man, dealing with the stupid fuckery that happens out here in the society. But Donald Trump ain't wrong in saying that he wants to make war a military, a, a six military branch, man. I mean, space, a, a six military branch. And really and truly, he's going to attempt to do that. Why? Let's read Isaiah 66 and 15 reads, For behold, the Lord Yahweh shall come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. When, it, when the scripture speaks about chariots, that's a, that or clouds or, um, you know, pillar, a pillar of salt. You know, that's talking about, that's talking about the, 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 the so-called UFOs, man. That they're, as they refer to in modern day society today because you got to understand that the ancient prophets of Isaiah, Zechariah on down they didn't have the terminology we have now of flying saucer, spaceship, unidentified flying objects, whatever you know, they were referring to the most highest, the most highest mode of transportation by the terminology terminology that they knew at the time one of them being chariots, a cloud, etc. But notice it says the Lord Yahweh shall come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render, render his anger with fury and his rebuke with, fl with flames of fire. 
for by the by his sword, but for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Now that sounds like some real heavy war talk right there, and that's talking about the last days, man. Saying that the Most High is gonna come with his chariots and extreme fire, man. That's talking about um those laser beams, concentrated fire, a, you know, the Most High spiritual equivalent of what you know the what the so-called white man's bums are honestly speaking a lot of hell is going to come on the earth man and as Esau knows that he's got a lot to pay for he knows that the most high is going to return and make a grand entrance and that's why he's out here trying to militar militarize space man that's not a joke They're, they've literally got a lot of money invested into in, into military warfare you think icbms and all of that and nuclear and nuclear weapons are expensive Hey man, these rockets that they're sending up, sending up to space, these satellites that they got exploring the stars, these space stations they got watching out for what's going on, it's because they know that Yahabash and Yahweh is out there, man. And they know that Yahweh is going to come back in the chariots, man. They know it, man. The book of Habakkuk speaks about the fact that this so called white man never keep up at home. He doesn't even want to stay on the planet, man. He's trying to inhabit the moon, trying to, you know. Hey man, the Most High is going to flatten this man and he's going to come back with his chariots to do so. And this man knows that. That's, that, that's why he's out here bugging. That's why he's so worried about what's out there in space. That's why the so-called most powerful nation on the planet Earth today, even though they ain't fixed their own nation or problems on Earth, they're trying to worry about space, man. Because they know Yahabar Shem Shai is going to destroy them when he returns through them chariots, man. Zechariah, the fifth chapter on the fourth verse says, I, and I will bring it forth, says the Lord of hosts, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and it shall enter into the house of the thief, and into the, into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name, and it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with the timber timber thereof, and the stones thereof. Now, what that's talking about is the chariots, man, because if you read up a little bit in the second chapter, or really from the top, the words of Zechariah says, "Say, then I turned up mine eye. Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll." Now, when it's talking about a flying roll, what that what that pertains to is another scripture about the chariots, man. Because Zechariah saying he looked up and he saw what looked to be a flying roll, and he said unto me, "What seest thou?" And I answered and s said, "I see a flying roll. The length of it is twenty cubits, and the breadth of it ten cubits." Now I can't remember exactly that the length of cubits um the apostles have gone into that many a times but he saw what would have been not so big a chariot compared to some of the others but he saw a chariot man yeah and he described it in measurements that he had back then then he said unto me this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth for every one that s s stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it and every one that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it meaning that those chariots are going to come and cause hell man for the wicked man they're going to bring a bad time they're going to bring evil to the wicked that's why Yahweh Shem Yahushai said in verse 4 I will bring it forth says the Lord of hosts and it shall enter into the house of the thief being the so called white man you know and into the house of him that swear falsely by my name and it shall remain in the midst of his house and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof basically man the most high is really going to be out here shooting some spiritual tractor beams man this you know beaming up his elect and then destroying everything that's left including not just the heathen but you two thirds also man ezekiel 9 and 4 is a good scripture for that because a lot of you niggas are going to die with the, with the heathen, man. You're going to come back in your right mind. But ultimately speaking, you're going to have to die first. The Most High is going to come with an innumerable amount, amount of angels, man. And he's going to do a hostile takeover, takeover over the, of the earth. And you've got Esau out there thinking he's going to be able to fight the Most High. And that's one of the reasons why they're investing so much in space as of late, especially. And if you, if you realise it, every movie that comes out, whether it be some Avengers or some X-Men, you know, it's always got that, that, or Superman, or you know, whatever, um, um, Mar whatever DC or Marvel, it's always got the theme of aliens coming from outer space trying to take over the Earth, whether that be apocalypse, dark side, whatever the hell. That's because they know that a dark, thin black man is gonna, so-called black man, is gonna is gonna pierce the clouds, come in his chariots, and bring this place down, man. Psalm sixty-eight and seventeen reads, "The chariots of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai are twenty thousand, even twenty thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place." Hey, there's gonna be a hostile invasion of the planet Earth, man. A lot of people are going to die, man. Trust me. 
Yeah. And Yahweh Bashmi Hawashai is going to bring that judgment. He's going to be leading the chariots. It says in Second Ezra, man, that, you know, he sat on a chariot, man, like looked like it was grave from a mountain. Let me see if I can find that. This is second. Yeah, second Ezra is the 13th chapter and the 6th verse. I'm not going to grab that anyway in a minute, but just give me a second. Is the Most High really going to bring judgment, swift judgment, man? He's going to send his son down, and Yahweh Shai, his son, is going to be at the front, man. The very forefront. Isaiah chapter 47, verse 3 says, Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I shall take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. Talking about what the Harbor Shemi Shai is going to do to the wicked, man. Preluding to the so called white man. Verse 4, however, says in relation to Israel, As for our Redeemer, the Lord, Yehaba Hashem Yehoshua of hosts is his name, the Lord of armies, man. And what's the mode of transportation that the Lord's armies use? Because they don't use tanks or fighter jets or sea vessels. They use those spiritual vehicles, man, those chariots, man. Yeah? The Lord of hosts, Yehaba Hashem Yehoshua is his name, the Holy One of Israel. And you best believe the Most High is going to come and cause havoc on the planet Earth. I personally can't wait, man. Judgment needs to occur. Judgment really needs to occur, man, in this society. And you best believe that the Most High going to bring it spiritually. It's, said, it's, it's mentioned in the scriptures that a lot of judgment's going to come, man, from the skies. And that's why you got Donald Trump and America putting so much money in their space defense, man, because they know that the Most High is going to come and destroy their society, man. But Rockefeller, how about Hashem, how about Shai? Yeah? This is 2nd Esther's, the 13th chapter. And I'm going to start from... Um, I'm going to start from verse 6, man. But, but I beheld, and lo, this is Ezra's watching, you know, what was going on in the, in the vision the Most High sent him. But I behold, held, and lo, he graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. Now, obviously, the Most High won't just be standing on an Everest, um, on a Mount Everest equivalent, just having a mountain fly. That's talking about a chariot, man. But obviously, Ezra didn't have the terminology we have now, like I said. So he referred to it as... What it what it looked like a big mountain, man. So it says, but I would have seen the regional place where the hill was graven, and I could not. Basically, meaning that it was the, the chariot was so large he couldn't even see to the end of it, man. That's what the most has coming to deal with, and that's why these people are out here, these Edomites are out here, and they're worried, man. That's why they're putting so much money into these these, these, these space programs, man. Because they know that the Most High is going to come and judge them through space. Hey, it says, But I would have seen, verse 7, But I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven, and I could not. And after this I beheld, and lo, they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid, and yet thus fight. Hey, man. What that means is that all of these nations, and hey, it's been alluded to, there's many documentaries brothers can watch on that. A lot of these nations are going to come together in the midst of that World War Three, and say, yo, we've got a, a greater enemy, we've got a common enemy. They got, their common en enemy is the Son of the Most High, the Saviour of Israel, Yahweh Shai, man, through the spirit of his father, Yahweh. And they're going to try and fight the Most High, but let's see what's, what it's going to say. So it says, And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid, and yes, they fight. That's fight, meaning that these nations are going to come together and fight the Lord. They're going to be worried, but they're going to try. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flame and breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests, and they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flame and breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight, and burned them up every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. Hey, man. What that's talking about is the most high Yahabar Shemi Havashai is going to return, yeah, with his chariots, that innumerable multitude, with fire and brimstone pursuing to Isaiah 66 chapter for this place. He's going to come nuking everything, totally destroying the society, man. 
This technology is not new to the Lord. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with that same thermal nuclear technology coming from the chariot. He allowed Esau to get it, and Esau just fronting like this is some new shit that he just developed, man. The Most High has always been advanced, man. In what we class the so-called ancient days, where we think society wasn't as as advanced as it, as it is today when it really was. You know, they were out there building pyramids, our people in slavery, that people, that the architects of today still can't understand. Hey, our people were, were wise then, and we still wise now, man. I hope you got a wise king, being King David, and, and really over him, Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, man. The Most High is going to come in those chariots, like it said in Acts, man, the same way to the disciples, the same way the Most High left, the same way he's going to return, man. But this time, like the scripture says earlier, in Isaiah 47 and 3, the Most High ain't going to meet Esau as a man. He's going to come as a spiritual force through the space, through, 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 the, through, through the elements, man, through space. And that's why Esau's out there, man, trying to defend himself out of space. That's why he's trying to expand his military out there because he wants to be ready for Yahweh Shai. But guess what? The Most High is still going to take him down because the scripture is written, man. Truth shall be declared and corruption overcome. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai going to return through them clouds. He's going to crack them clouds, take down the rest of these nations, liberate his people from slavery, destroy the two thirds, and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Razal, we'll be members of the elect. We're going to enjoy ourselves, man, in the kingdom of heaven when we're finally redeemed. But Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Razal, we got to get through these hard times first. So I'm going to say Baraka Fa Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Bahasham Rukwa Kadash, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and Shalom Akbar. Shalom.